just a good old boy. Getting our commercial put on. Well, we're going to use a commercial this year, so it's nice to be getting it spread. It should have really should have had it put on a couple weeks ago, but it's been wet and they're behind, so I mean, I can't can't really say nothing. I mean, they're doing the best they can. They're kind of like all of us. I mean, it's, it's rain has really put us in a Fine. We've had uh, quite a bit of dry weather here lately. Y'all probably wonder what's uh, happened with the round baler. Uh, when are you going to get it? Get back to fixing that thing. Well, i kind of been piddling with it here and there when I had a chance. But we've actually had some decent weather the last week. Maybe a couple weeks. Um, so we've been... Uh, no, I hadn't really had a whole lot of time to work on it. Uh, I've been busy fooling with everything else, trying to get uh, get everything sprayed and, and done and whatnot, and we're running behind, really. But uh, spraying, I've been doing all right. I haven't done any hay fields yet. That's the one thing I haven't done, is I haven't done any hay fields. Um, We've, I've been doing, well, I've done two that's cow pasture slash hay fields to take cows off of, uh, but uh, just solely hay fields with the bulk of a hay ground I hadn't even touched. Uh, I've been focusing on cow pastures. It's still been really cool lately, uh, and the temperatures haven't been quite right, so I figured if I'm going to do something and then maybe it not stick like it should at least it'll be cow put around and i ain't got what is bush hog uh but we're about to start later this week uh once this rain gets out of here i've got one cow farm i've got to do uh it's quite a bit of ground there i've got to run over and spray and then after that i'm going to be full-blown hay ground spraying uh we're going to get started on the hay fields uh our other form of fertilizer we've got Done got it put on my top secret stuff. <laughs> I got it put on already and it's done. So hopefully we'll get some of this knocked out and uh, get to where we can get something done. Okay, um, today we're going to be getting back on this uh, round baler. Uh, I've had some issues with this. We got all the teeth put on these tine bars um but the little flicker arms that i couldn't get off when i pulled the reason why i pulled this reel off the baler we still could not get off we wound up and uh we tried heating them to get them off uh use pullers um everything you could possibly do uh and nothing would work we got them cherry red hot and we wound up and and uh cut them off with a torch so that way we could uh, just at least get them off to where we could put the new bushings on um, when we cut them off I did not realize just exactly how much these little flicker arms were going to cost um, y'all hold on to your chairs those little pieces that went on the end were $130 I think it was each uh for one um that's without the little roller bearings the clips or anything that was just the little flicker arm itself that uh went that holds the roller that goes through the uh cam track um and there was no way to get them off you can't get the bushings out or the tine bars off of the reel without pulling those off first um that's the only way to do it uh, we wound up and cut them off uh, one of the shafts we did scar up and had to build up a little bit and I reground it off um, it went on perfectly easily and fine one of the shafts that did not have any damage at all um, I did clean it up a little bit with a grinder uh, where it had a little bit of melted plastic on it or 
whatever composite or whatever kind of material those bushings are made out of um cleaned it off uh took the new pieces and went to try to put it together and it would not go together um they were so it, they basically were having to be pressed on to get them on so what i wound up and uh ended up doing which it, i don't i believe it may still be on there in this shot i can't tell um for sure what i'm doing i believe i'm doing here if i remember correctly i was putting the two on that i hadn't uh taken off yet this is the little piece that's 130 dollars i got it there in my hand um and i wound up and i got it off i pulled it off i took a puller put on the back side of it cranked it down as tight as i could then i took an air hammer and hammered it from the back side and did that probably for about 35 minutes and finally got it back off after um i tried beating it on and it wouldn't go on um because they were so tight and then after that i proceeded to ground grind the rest of the shafts off on the end like i did the one that uh, we had uh, damaged and repaired and then everything went together uh all right um if i have one complaint about klaus it's that their parts are high um and it's that way anywhere you go uh actually cane equipment where i do most of my uh, business at just about everything um they're probably the most reasonable i've found on any of their stuff um and that's for any brand but it, it don't matter what you do they're kind of like chrome you're going to know it when you go to the parts counter um but you are getting quality i'll say that um that's the thing if the parts are expensive but they're quality parts um and they're made good the uh the the amount of hay that's been through this baler and it's lasted as long as it has and it's done what it has on our ground with the the kind of ground we have to run on with these ditches and hills and terraces and some of the roughest conditions possible to run a hay baler across that most people in the united states would never even think about running a hay piece of hay machinery across and just use it as pasture land here where we live that's our hay ground uh that's our, that's what basically if we can get across it with a tractor we'll pretty well bail it because that's about all we've got available to us <laughs> um so everything's under extra stress now if i had this thing on bottom land that's smooth or land that's been tilled and smoothed out rolled and, and redone and or just like so a lot of the land you see out in different places that's a lot and plays a lot better than ours i could probably run this baler 40 50 000 bales and it would be fine um but the biggest thing that that's that kills balers and i don't care what brand it is in our area is our land and how rough it is but i mean it's what we have to deal with and then that's the way i mean it's just part of one of those things that everybody has something different they have to deal with wherever you live whether it's poor ground good ground uh or just whatever kind of thing you have that everybody has different things they deal with our thing is rough ground our ground's good for growing but it's rough um that's the only thing with our land that we have available to us not every field's that way just some um but when i was hammering this thing originally it kind of messed up the little roll pin holes so that's why i was drilling it back out there and putting these back on but um that's my only complaint really with klaus is just their parts prices um overall but i mean that's crohn's the same way uh that we have that we deal with um coon's not quite as bad but i mean they're pretty close but seems like klaus and crohn's pretty close in comparison on those so thanks for watching i finally got this thing back together and i'll see y'all next time